everybody, hope you're well. Uh, today I will read from a book titled Stupendous Miserable City, Pasolini's Rome by John David Rhodes, published by the University of Minnesota Press. Rome is at the heart of Pasolini's cinema. This is, very simply, this book's central premise. Pasolini's first two films, A Cattone, 1961, and Mamma Roma, 1962, are as much about Rome as they are about anything else, and the power of their specific historical, political and aesthetic interventions remains inaccessible without some knowledge of the Roman urban and architectural context out of which they emerged and to which they respond. Similarly, the full significance of later films like La Ricotta 1963, Hawks and Sparrows 1966, La Terra Vista dalla Luna 1966, and La Sequenza del Fiore di Carta 1969, Pasolini's only other films to privilege Roman location shootings, cannot be grasped without a knowledge of their relationship to Roman urban history. Furthermore, the shift in Pasolini's filmmaking from a practice grounded in contemporary everyday life to a practice predicated on allegory needs to be understood as a departure from Rome, a departure that is only fully comprehensible within the Romanness of the earlier films. To tell, as fully as I can, the story of the profound connection between Pasolini's filmmaking and Rome is my project in this book. The films that are studied in detail in this book were set and shot for the most part in the marginal landscape of Rome's periphery, the most dynamic and rapidly changing domain of the city in the years after World War II. The story of the periphery's rapid and reckless growth, legible in the countless anonymous apartment buildings and housing projects, is the story of Rome's redefinition in the post-war period. This redefinition was a rapid acceleration of a process of urban expansion that began after Rome was made the capital of United Italy in 1870, continued up through the years of fascism and then resumed with abandon in the 1950s and 1960s. Pasolini's Roman films are among the most significant and compelling aesthetic responses to and documents of the Roman periphery as it existed in the 1960s. The films grew out of Pasolini's engagement with the periphery that consisted of his living in and writing about this same environment during the decade of the 1950s. Pasolini's enormous literary production of the 1950s is marked by the intensity of its engagement with the city of Rome. Having left his home in the region of Friuli in northern Italy, Pasolini arrived in Rome in 1950, seeking a new life like so many other post-war immigrants to the capital city. Later in the year of his arrival, he had produced an intimate poetic diary, recording both his entrapment inside the house of his own consciousness and his dislocation inside Rome's alien but alluring landscape. A brief look at one of the earliest of these essays reveals not just Pasolini's interest in the city that was his new home, but also how this interest bears from a very early moment the mark of the cinema. Here is a passage from a sort of hybrid documentary essay short story produced in 1951, Studies of the Life of Testaccio. You will always see a murky, dazzled sky over Testaccio, springtime warmth still on the chilly side, the green surface of the trees spotted with violet or with the indigo of fruit saplings, with the charm of a Japanese landscape. Panoramic openings from above, as in some French film classic, René Clair, Porta Portese, The Juvenile Reformatory, of a solid, discolored Roman Baroque, high, deserted Tiber embankments, but this in passing, the camera will immediately focus on the Testaccio side. Ponte Testaccio, bare shore of a poisonous green, above the water of the Tiber, still swollen from the winter flooding. Long, yellowish block of five or six-story houses, early 20th century, with a northern seaside look. Asphalt of the streets near the river. Significantly, this vision of Rome does not resort to the familiar, picturesque traditions of looking at the city. 
there is no dome of St. Peter's here, there is no Spanish steps. Instead, we have an aerial shot of something less appealing, a juvenile prison, a flea market. But even these places, shot only in passing, are passed over in favor of a prospect still less welcoming, that of Testaccio, whose bulky and forlorn apartment blocks, set down in a rigid grid in the late 19th and early 20th century, make up Rome's first official working-class district. In a sense, Pasolini's entire aesthetic could be deduced from this passage. In it we have evidence of his eschewal of the usual itinerary of Roman sites, of his interest in working-class milieu, in mass housing and its architecture, of his passion for the unlovely. Moreover, the abrupt transitions among views, details and objects of description in the passage, here self-consciously framed as cinematic, are consonant with the rough surfaces and jarring eclipses of his films, demonstrating the ineluctable entwinement of Pasolini's literary and cinematic production. Just as the neighborhood of Testaccio is only a prelude to the seediness and immensity of Rome's later blooming peripheral neighborhoods, so does studies of the life of Testaccio only hint at the enormous concentration of energies that Pasolini would bring to bear on the subject of Rome and its periphery. This book situates the films Pasolini made in and about Rome in two informing contexts. First, that of modern Roman urban and architectural history, and second, that of his literary production of the 1950s. A cattone was shot largely in Roman peripheral neighborhoods known as the Borgate, a pejorative term denoting the large fascist era mass housing projects built outside the city center. The term is also often used interchangeably to refer to the swarming clusters of huts and hovels built by new immigrants to Rome along the outskirts of the city. Mamma Roma was shot in a public housing project built in the 1950s, one of the many constructed to address the needs of Rome's underhouse citizens, many of them residents of the Borgate like the ones seen in Acattone. Hawks and Sparrows feature scenes shot on the farthest outskirts of Rome, where the newly completed Autostrada del Sole still had the air of a construction site. Because the obvious imbrication of Pasolini's filmmaking with these several instances of urban and architectural history, I have grounded my analysis of these and other films in the historical context of several episodes from Rome's urban development in the 20th century, chief among these the following. The history of the construction and growth of the Borgati under fascism, the large-scale public housing projects of the 1950s that ambitiously sought to address Rome's housing shortage and were also the breeding grounds of the neo-realist architecture movement, and the construction of the Autostrada and its redefinition of urban and territorial space as well as its impact on Roman urban planning in the 1960s. The second informing context is that of Pasolini's literary production in the 1950s. As we have already seen in the passage above, there are strong links between Pasolini's literary and cinematic work. For instance, I establish Pasolini's poems and letters in which he first begins to articulate his attitude towards Rome as context in conjunction with the history of the Borgate. I interpret at some length Pasolini's long poem The Tears of the Excavator from his celebrated volume of poetry Le Ceneri di Gramsci in connection with the history of public housing construction in post-war Italy. This poem's central image is that of a construction site at which a housing complex, perhaps like the one pictured in Mamma Roma, is being built. This context of historical, biographical, literary analysis and urban history is the matrix out of which the analysis of the films emerge. Often discussions of city and cinema assume a rather abstract, diffuse character. Often the city might even be only an imagined city, a fabrication of set design and cinematography. Inspiring this book is the belief that each instance of interaction between a city and a cinematic practice is entirely specific and unique unto itself. 
Furthermore, I am interested in Pasolini's treatment of an actual concrete urban milieu, peripheral Rome, not a fantasmatic piece of set design built on a back lot of Cinecittà or Hollywood. I treat the images of Rome in Pasolini's film as a kind of material archive of the city, as a record of how the city was used and inhabited, what it looked like and felt like at a particular point in time. Of course, the films are also records of Pasolini's own thinking about Rome, for his films are not transparent documents but elaborate inventions and interventions. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.